Welcome back our dear viewers, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli witnessed the launch of a high-level roundtable organized by the Ministry of International Cooperation to mark one year of the NUEFI program. Minister of Electricity and Renewable Energy, Environment, Agriculture, Transport, Water Resources and Irrigation joined the chairman of the Suez Canal Economic Zone to discuss the progress on NUEFI program. To shed more light about that, we are very much delighted to be joined over the phone by Dr. Magdi Alam, the advisor of the Global Climate Program and Environment Facility. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Uh, sir, first, uh, uh, can you shed light uh, about the uh, NUAFI program, which has been launched for a year now? The uh, NUAFI program actually is a new initiative uh, that supports the triangle that we are all over the world looking for more increasing assets in these uh, three diameters. The first one is, of course, uh, the uh, water resources. Yeah. And the second one, of course, is energy. And the third one of, uh, is uh, food security or mm -hmm. nutritional supplies. Mm -hmm. So through this triangle, we are trying all the institutions in Egypt, actually, it's correlated uh, with some international initiatives, either with FAO, mm -hmm. the Organization for Agriculture, or with the FED, the, uh, actually the budget for international funds. Mm -hmm. And also there is a cooperation with all the international institutions, especially in the climate resilience and in the climate adaptation. Mm -hmm. Those are the two parameters that we all the African countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, in hurry and quickly would like to repair the damage of the climate change. Yes. The damage of the climate change, including in all Africa continent. This continent, by the way, is only have four percent of the total GHG all over the the, the, the world. Only four percent. So there is no real development in Africa continent for this, either maybe three or four countries like Egypt and South Africa. So those uh, countries actually have now efficient irrigation technologies mm -hmm. to supply the irrigation for the arid and semi-arid land, which is actually a, a very big challenge. Again, it's the development either on the rural level or in even the urban level, but the, actually the supplies of the food security is the most important issue that we all the institutions yes. are working to increase this supply. Yes. As, as far as there is actually the, the parameters of extreme events that we see some of those events through mm -hmm. the last year and maybe the three years before, we have increasing in the temperature of the surface of the earth. And this increasing may exceed 1.5 degrees of the uh, surface of the earth to be increasing in heating, not to decreasing. This is vice versa that we would like to have. We would like to reduce the GHG, the greenhouse gas, to avoid the extreme events that being happen by those extreme climate change. So this is the first challenge, which of course needs a lot of funds. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. even in the day of uh, COP27 that being uh, developed and managed by the government of Egypt and yes. under, the, under the patronage of his excellency, mm -hmm. President Sisi, it was a, a real serious proposal for the first time that we have what's called compensation or loss and damage compensation. This loss and damage compensation actually for the rural areas being damaged by the agriculture decrease, extremely decrease mm -hmm. in the production up to 20 or maybe less 15 percent of the traditional income generation of the main crops. We are referring, for example, for the wheat and we are referring for the maize and we are referring mm -hmm. also to the olive and the, uh, actually the other uh, basic plants that we already expert, Egypt already have up to 28% exports to the European and the American markets of our 
يعني سترا كروب اوليف كروب اند اذر ريليتد يعني فيري اسينشال فور سستينابيلتي اوف فود سيكيورتي ان ذا فيلد سبيشالي ان افريكا اند ساوث امريكا افريكا اند ساوث امريكا ار سفرينج فروم دو سيك ثري ايفنت without three and development they have in such development like china for example mm. and nowadays china china of course taking a lot of wood all over the world and they cut actually uh, up to 30% of the total tropical forest mm. in south america and this is actually increasing the negative impact of the climate changes mm. on the other continents like the Africa one and the South America one. So those two continents are suffering from development mm. being done in Europe and the United States and China nowadays. So those development actually uh, are compensating some of the defects, especially in China. But nowadays China being increasing up to be the second country all over the world to increase food security with all kinds and in the same time Africa and uh, South America are suffering from uh, actual saturation of the basic nutritional supply. Mm. Indeed. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli stressed uh, that uh, there is actually still hope uh, to overcome the challenge of the climate change, but only if there is a will and determination, which is what Egypt actually is seeking. What measures in the country uh, could be taken in this regard, but uh, which could be in cooperation somehow with the international community because we are bearing as well the repercussions of the neglect for this very important file from uh, uh, the Western countries? Actually, Egypt is uh, yeah, I mean, declaring the green economy approach. Mm. not the black one or the brown yes. one. Yes. So it is the first initiative that maybe all over Africa and declared that they were completely transferred from the traditional economy or what's called the black and brown economy to green economy. The green economy actually is uh, stated by the prime minister and approved by His Excellency the President after the, and a bit mm. uh, dialogue and the, con uh, 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 the con conservation actually with uh, other co uh, components and partners. Mm. So those partners nowadays are partners also with mm. us in the initiative of NOAF. And mm. the NOAF actually is mainly the agriculture one, but of course in and including the energy and the water resources. This is why, for example, Egypt nowadays establishment yeah. Al Mahkama, uh, yeah, purifying the station for water in yes. Port Said, uh, and this is actually a good example that we are recycling up to 12, 12 cubic, uh, 12 million cubic meters of water. It was lost as uh, actually a drainage of the canal we have in Egypt up to 27 kilometers length of canals and other tributaries that carry the water from Aswan till Delta of Egypt. Indeed. So uh, those EIT or efficient irrigation technology is actually a very essential approach to save water uh, primarily and also to recycle the water secondary and also to go to new land like Larish and Sinai. Nowadays, the Egypt is looking and started already to uh, cultivate up to 500,000 uh, feet in uh, Sinai, in South Sinai. Yes. And actually, this is in addition to the coastal zone of El Arish, Tel Port Said. Yes. Uh, it's actually also being cultivated nowadays by a lot of uh, different approaches of three, at least three basic agricultural to add for the food security issue in China, Venezuela, not only all over the country.
Indeed. Also, the Prime Minister, during his participation in the high-level roundtable discussions, witnessed the launching ceremony of the European Investment Bank's regional headquarters for North Africa and the Near East in Cairo. What is the significance of such an event, uh, Doctor? Actually, Egypt, uh, through the, five, uh, the last five years, has agreement with uh, more than eight international banks as donors and as participants also in funding the mm -hmm. budget related to especially the water and uh, food uh, security. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, because of the starting of stopping using the petroleum and coal as an energy and replacing this with solar uh, energy or wind energy or waterfall the energy. So those are the main three electric generation uh, powers uh, made by each to avoid and to reduce any of the pollution or the rich regime coming from the coal or the petroleum one. So nowadays, we in Egypt may be the first country nowadays who are using up to 30%, according to the Minister of Electricity, up to 30% is completely depending on clean energy, wind energy and mm. uh, waterfall the energy, and also biomass energy, biogas energy, not the beauty as well. Indeed. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, also during the round the table activities, Minister of International Cooperation. Oui. Yes. Oui. Yes. Oui. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Magdi. I do believe uh, that we are having uh, some technical difficulties uh, with uh, our uh, communication with uh, Dr. Magdi. Dr. Magdi Alam, advisor to the Global Climate Program and Environment Facility. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, precious input. Our dear viewers will go to a short break, and after that, we'll be back with our segment in the breakfast show. So stay tuned.